Hey guys, today I am going to make a video response to Alpha Investments video. A lot of Timmy's are going to lose money. I 1000% agree with him. And I think the Timmy's, they fell for a trap. They fell for the Rudy Chan trap. And what does that mean? So Rudy Chan sells you boxes that are heavy, take a lot of storage, and suddenly you have a hundred boxes of War of the Sparks, which is a really good set. It looks like it went up in money. It looks when every time you search for it, it looks like it's doing really well. And it should be a great investment, but you want it's time to sell it. Okay, you go on Card Kingdom, they only want four of them. You go on Channel Fiable, they only want eight. So it seems like a lot of work, right? Hey, you have 100 boxes, but nobody will take more than eight boxes at one time. And once they take eight of them, they're gonna close out because that's all they really need. So you have a great box. It's War of the Spark. It's very entertaining. People have good memories of it. It's got Planeswalkers, which people really enjoy. And you sold your reserve list cards for pennies on the dollar to Rudy Chan. So you could buy this, you could take advantage of this great opportunity he's offering you which is to buy standard boxes at the time and then invest in it. Well, as you're gonna find out, I will always take your reserve list cards, but I will never take your sealed boxes anymore. I bought two sealed box collections. The first one was kind of a smaller one. I think it was like $3,000, $4,000. That's like one of every recent set. And he went to Rudy Chan. Rudy Chan gave him a very low offer. And then, so he came to me in a mass buy list easily because it was one of each box. And they had a buy list on it. So easy, easy peasy, done pretty simply. Next we had, um, oh, he was the guy who wanted to make the films. Remember when I was talking about that, I advertised his film company. Uh, so it's Halloween, maybe he has a new film up. So maybe I'll check it out a little later. Um, he, he liked the horror ha Halloween films. And the next was uh, a Rudy Chan super uh, fan, like super Patreon at $100 a month. And he sold me $26,000, $27,000 of his sealed product, which, you know, honestly was so heavy. And that's the sealed product. I mean, the fact that he bought it from Rudy Chan really shows you that all the Rudy Chan members, they all have the same product because now I'm getting email after email after email with the same products. Like they, uh, they bought collector's edition of Pharaohs, uh, Throne of the Outer Ring collector's edition. They bought some other collector's editions I'm not remembering right now. They bought Modern Horizon. They bought War of the Sparks. They bought, bought Magic 2020. They bought uh, Ravnica Allegiance and Ravnica whatever, right? I mean, they bought all of these boxes, okay? And now they're just sitting on them and they're like, oh, hey, you know, I need some money right now. My rent is due, my mortgage is up. Uh, tax season is upon us, right? Where everybody's receiving their taxes for their property right now. Let me go ahead and sell their boxes. And then they realize, uh-oh, the buy list, you know, I have a hundred boxes of War of the Spark of Dominaria, but the buy list only says they will take four. <laughs> well, I had this happen just today with Eternal Masters. The guy had 40 of them. And the only buy list I could find on it was uh, Card Kingdom, and they only won four of them. And 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 he was like, "Oh, people get so offended." But the end, at the end of the day, Card Kingdom knows what it's doing. If the Card Kingdom wanted forty of them, they would just list forty of them. I mean, it's a simple change of button, right? And I think this guy was so offended by the buy list before, not understanding that it's actually going to get a lot worse. Because once he's done selling the four at the free 50 price, he's not gonna find a $300 price anywhere else. Because again, if that's the only store who wants this product and they only want four of them and you have four, 40 of them, where are you gonna sell the other 36? Oh, he'll put them on uh, eBay. Who would bid on it? Like he would tank himself. Like how, how long would he have to wait? Like, so he's gonna put a box you know, let it go for a free day auction. Okay, he gets a decent price. Now he's gonna put another box. So he's gonna spend months <laughs> selling these boxes. And eventually there will be a breaking point where nobody bids on the box anymore. The problem with these old boxes and the reason these Timmy's are gonna lose money is very simple. Nobody wants to buy a hundred boxes of War of the Sparks. There is not the, because they, 
Dominaria is a great set, wonderful set. Why would you buy War of the Sparks for double the money of Dominaria today? No, why would you? War of the Sparks is not even, it doesn't really have standard, obviously it doesn't have standard playable without rotation, but it doesn't even have modern playable for the most part. Like why wouldn't you just buy the set in standard for cheap? It's every Walmart, it's every local game store for under $100 a box. It's on Amazon. Click, click, click for, for basically $100 a box. So you're gonna pay 200, maybe more a box. Why? So the Timmy's, what they do not understand is liquidity. If you had a hundred reserve, hundred um, plateaus, I take them all. I buy list. So would Card Kingdom. So I mean, their card crit. I guarantee you, their quantity limit isn't four on plateau. If you have 10 Black Lotuses, you don't think Card Kingdom would take all 10 of them? Yeah, they would. But if you had 100 boxes of Modern Masters or whatever random set that you have that uh, the Rudy Chan sold to you, they're not gonna take that much because it cannot be sold. It cannot be liquidated. If you had a Black Lotus, I would easily buy your Black Lotus today. For a good price, we would negotiate, we would look at buy lists, we'd look at comps, and we would be reason a reasonable agreement, right? If you had a Black Lotus worth of Dominaria, hell no, hell to the no. The, the one lesson I learned buying the 27, 26, whatever it came out to be, 20, like it was expensive, was once you buy that type of boxes, you don't have no more space for no more boxes. Cause I'm still getting distributor stuff, like, but like you just don't have space. You literally have no space left. It would be great to get 40 eternal map. I mean, it would be great, but where am I gonna put them? There's nowhere to put them. And there's no one who wants to buy them. So it's not even that we need more of them. Like why would we stock up on a box that has rotated out? And the reason that it's so valuable because it's old, nobody actually wants to open the box. Like this is like a ludicrous thing. I'd much rather take the underground sea. I'd much rather take your, even the plateau. I don't really love plateau, but I'll take it. It's a dual land. I would take the plateau. I would take the proxy, quote, proxy Black Lotus way over any amount of boxes that the proxy Black Lotus, the equivalent value of boxes because the proxy Black Lotus can fit in a sleeve. It can be put in a binder and it can be displayed easily. The what twenty thousand dollars of boxes is not like that, or even ten. Let's call it ten thousand dollars boxes. It's not like five thousand. Whatever it is, the proxy Lotus. Eventually, it's going to be interesting to see what price point it is. You traded a liquid asset, which is either cash or your reserve list cards for ten percent to Rudy Chan, for illiquid asset. And only today do you find out that that asset is illiquid. Nobody wants your old boxes. I bought my bats. If I could redo it, I would not have bought it. Um, the guy was very nice, very generous. He, the numbers were very spot on. At the time, the numbers were very, very good. But all the emails I get are just desperate people trying to sell pallets of just random, I mean, yes, if you checked up the price on Amazon on TCG Player, you would think that this was a good, that you made money. But then look at the sell, sales history. The last box sold maybe a month ago. You have a hundred of them, dude. Like how the F are you gonna move them? Because even me, a box breaking channel, I don't think I have the power to move that. Because A, the product is more expensive. So you wanna sell it for more money to make a profit but it's not more popular online. The most popular sets will be the ones that are brand new, like on Infinity. Like you might think it's whole, 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 very funny. But yeah, it's on, on Infinity is a pretty popular set. I've opened a bunch, it actually has stickers in them. Um, it, it's interesting, it's an interesting set. I'll put it that way. Hi guys.